You're all very welcome to this day, a clinical challenge to lead or be led by health IT. And it's been wonderful to see so many people come. I'll guide you a little bit now through what will be happening during the day and the context that it's in. What it's all about is trying to get this learning cycle of healthcare to go faster, at least have the IT systems not block it. I hope you've all done your homework and read a little text about this. Uh, but just as a repetition, that we want things to work in clinical practice and we have research to get more knowledge, but then we need to get that knowledge out to people. You could do that with educations, but you also need to do it kind of online in the healthcare situation with decision support, reminders, and things like this. Uh, and Sir Murray Gray said, was that knowledge is the enemy of disease. So that if you use what we already know about healthcare, uh, then that can have a greater impact than any fantastic invention in the coming years. And uh, you've also read up a little bit about this gap that is increasing, that we have our cognition, it's kind of at almost the same level, I think, and then we have all this new information coming in that we could use for treating patients. Uh, but we don't. So it's about getting help from systems to get this working. And uh, when I started my PhD years ago, then I was talking a lot about interoperability, trying to connect systems to each other, like that would be the big problem, and that is still a problem. But what I've seen now when I'm out in a healthcare organization, I see more that the slowness of development of the systems is an even bigger problem. That, yes, it would be good to be able to send information back and forth between different caregivers, but what would be even more important is to get this cycle working and changing the systems to adapt to the always changing medicine. Um, and the good news is that you can use the same tools for both. I hope you will have come here with a lot of questions. Uh, I think you will leave, perhaps, with even more questions, but perhaps categorized in different piles. And uh, you probably have some things that you strongly think this is the way things are. You might leave here with this and this and this. And I hope you'll do some thinking and getting a framework to sort your questions in and to pursue this. This is just a start. It takes time. It takes time to learn to read, it takes time to get into computing and all this stuff. Some of you are already in both healthcare and computing. Good, and that's good. Okay, we will be using a model like this <clears throat> that we'll be exploring during the day. You have terminology systems. They are for things that, I think you've read it in your paper here, but it's generally applicable knowledge, things that are always valid. And then you have the documentation models that are more the things you see in electronic health records in screen forms and things like that. Things that you're doing to the patients, things that are being planned and observed and things like that. And then you can also have decision rules, logic working on these things. It could be for decision support that you get reminders and things, but it could also be rules to extract information to give you statistics and stuff like that. And these all go together. Uh, the documentation models, they use terminology systems because it would be very hard work to do everything in every little form and, and uh, template. Uh, you want, don't want to list all possible diseases every time you design a system. You point to some kind of terminology system and use entries from that instead. And then you have the decision rules. Um, they are dependent on the documentation models because you need to find, well, if this patient has this elevated value and this diagnosis, then we should do this. Then these rules, they need to find where to, where can we find that data? So actually shared decision rules have been around for ages, but the problem is that you have to do so much manual work to get them to find the information. So if these documentation models are done in a standardized way, a way that we can share with each other, then we can have kind of paths pointing to where the data is. So then we, we can't share the decision rules in an efficient way unless we have shared documentation models. 
uh, shared terminology systems, that's a no-brainer. We're already doing that. Uh, this is a simplification. Uh, actually, in reality, it probably looks more like this. No <laughs> clear edges, and it's all blurred, and they're more crammed together, and your actual system could be something like the black circle, that it's partly within this and partly doing other things, and it's connected to all kinds of things. Um, and we'll guide you through these different things today. Uh, Heather and Celia will be talking a lot about the documentation models. Heather will soon take over after me here. <laughs> and then uh, Mikael will talk about terminology systems, and specifically one that is called Snowbird CT, that is one of the more advanced ones and big ones that are around. It's a good way of getting to know what's coming there in the future, and it's actually used already. And Rong Chen will be talking about decision rules. And then Daniel and I will be a little bit like satellites around all this. And Daniel will also get into the mess in between those terminology systems and documentation models. It's unavoidable mess. So just we need just a way to treat it. And uh, some of you are um, using the same uh, EHR system. I should perhaps explain so EHR. That means there's a short form for electronic health record in Swedish, patient journal. Um, and you will hear another word. Someone will say open air. And that is the same as open EHR. That's just two ways of pronouncing it. It's to confuse everybody. So EHR systems, that's electronic health records. Uh, and some of you are using the same electronic health record as we do here in Östergötland. And they are starting to in introduce these things called archetypes. And you probably don't, not, not everyone realizes what kind of path we've taken into a big international thing. And, uh, I'm not even sure that everyone within Cambio understands that yet, so it will be an exci exciting travel. And now, this oh, wonderful, um, especially to clinicians here, I'll show you some links that you can look at later. We'll hope we don't get too much of that noise today. Uh, probably doesn't help closing the door, but thanks. Um, there's a, an author called Douglas Rushkoff that um, has done a lot of thinking about what's happening now when we're taking the analog reality into the digital world. And this is exactly what's happening to healthcare also. And he's written 10 commandments of the digital age. Uh, and uh, I've picked some of them here. You have choice, for example. You may always choose none of the above. Uh, so yes, no, neither. You kind of, the computer systems force you into boxes, to discrete choices, choose this or choose that. And uh, what kind of boxes there are, that's decided by a human, the human designing the system. And uh, the question is, who should be doing that? And another one is, you're never completely right that when you have this, it's easy to access information, but you don't always get the fine granular things. Have a look at those things. Look at a video where it's talking about these things. So for clinicians, you or at least your colleagues that are not as experienced as you will be needing some kind of decision rules. Uh, clever doctors know that they will be needing them themselves also. Uh, because of this knowledge gap that we were talking about, uh, you want to use all available information, or at least all relevant available information, to treat a patient. Uh, and if you're going to get a good system that doesn't remind you of things you already know and doesn't do too many errors, well, then you need to have good structure in your records. And you should think of who should create and up those, update those structures to go with medicine as medicine changes. Uh, well, it should, of course, be clinicians, assisted by informaticians, maybe. But you shouldn't let the technicians do this stuff. Because care is changing all the time, and there should be an easy way of doing these things. And that's what we will be talking about. You have a lot of clinicians involved in creating these terminology systems. Mikael will be telling you a little bit about how you can get involved in that. We have a lot of clinicians all over the world doing these kinds of documentation models that Heather will be talking about. So structuring everything in healthcare, maybe we don't need that. We can still have a lot of free text. We always will have. But how hard can it be? 
Well, that's a thing that is often underestimated, or what to say. Um, that some people have tried to count this. Now, you won't see all these numbers, but you can look at them afterwards. Um, the interesting thing is the initial man years column over there. If you look at documentation models, you have some different people that have done different um, calculations, seeing how, well, to get most of healthcare, the things that we don't want to keep in free text, but the ones that we want to structure, to get the, them in a good order. How many man years would it take? And then you have between, well, 80 and 250 man years. And then let's say that we change 10% of them each year. That would be like, well, somewhere around between 15 and 30 man years every year that you need to put in just to keep up with medicine. Someone has asked, when will this work be finished? Never. Or actually we say like five years after medicine has stopped developing. So, so that's the thing. Medicine develops all the time. So the big thing is the maintenance, getting this working. And to get the initial work done requires a lot of work by clinicians together with IT people. So you can't just pay a lot of IT people to do this. And the same thing for decision support rules. Um, uh, if you had 500 uh, queries and, and things like that, someone calculated that, well, it takes perhaps eight man years to get it started and then maintaining it one and a half year each year, man year. Uh, and that would be possible, but that was a very low calculation. If you ask Stan Huff from Intermountain, he says they need 5,000 rules, so it would be like 10 times that. Uh, so it's doable. That's not an impossible number. But if every health caregiver, every region in Sweden wants to do that over again instead of reusing each other's stuff, then it's not doable anymore. So we need to share these things. Um, so the mission is possible to structure the things that you want to structure, and that's also something that clinicians should be involved in. Well, if nobody's going to use the data in a structured form, of course, then you don't need to structure it. But who is to decide what needs to be structured or not? Well, it depends what kind of queries and what you want to do with the data, what kind of decision rules do you want? Those are clini clinical decisions, not technical. So you should share and reuse things. You should, to do that, it would be clever to use some kind of international, open, multilingual approaches. So if someone's done a good structuring in Portuguese, um, the formalism underneath should make it possible to translate that to Swedish or English or Norwegian or whatever. And the archetypes that Heather will be talking about, they are multilingual. You can uh, just translate them. That's a lot less work. It's a lot of work, but less work than doing the actual structuring. And you should have people from all countries doing those things together. And the same thing with SNOMED CT, for example. It's also a structure. It's also multilingual. It's got a built-in system for translation or handling translations. And then you should avoid unnecessary human delays and reinterpretations. We might think that computers are slow, yes, but IT departments and vendors are a lot slower than computers. So uh, we should let the clinicians do the detailed modeling in some kind of using some understandable method, using tools, and getting to see that this is what it might look like in the end. And then we should be able to take those things into the systems without uh, having someone reinterpreting this stuff. So sometimes you see people doing a lot of diagrams and things, and we kind of have the, the clinicians agree, well, it looks like almost the correct terms, but they have no clue what it will actually look in the system afterwards. So then when we give them the system, they say, oh, this is not what we meant. And of course, it's very hard to imagine from something. And you have reinterpretations that you have a technician trying to understand these things. You should catch it in a good model from the beginning where the clinicians can see the potential end results and then have a way of getting them into systems fast. That is one way of speeding up this cycle that we were talking about. And then there is a potential mess of all these models. You saw those numbers before. So you should use some kind of version control, and you can have that both in archetypes and in SNOMED CT. You can see this like, if we collected data about a patient five years ago, we used this version and we can understand what it means even today, but today we're using another version. So you can't just make it always backwards compatible in a bad way. You want to 
be able to evolve it in the future and still understand the old data. Um, and it's a socio-technical challenge. You need the clinicians involved in a national and in a global discussion. So this is what we will be talking about today. And we'll start now with Heather talking about documentation models. And then through the day, we will be moving around this picture and we'll get through questions and end discussions later also. If there is something during the day that you have a short question, one that you don't need to give all the context and whatever for two minutes, then you could raise your hand, like what does that word mean and things that help us go through. Otherwise, try to have the questions towards the end. <laughs> 